Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your five minute devotional. If you've been following along with us, you know we've been working our way through the book of 1 Samuel. We're all the way over to chapter 30. A lot of things have happened. David and Saul had a falling out. Uh, David was anointed as the king to be. Saul doesn't like that. So Saul's been chasing David. Now, Samuel has passed. He, of course, was the prophet that was kind of leading through all of this. And now Saul is gone as well. Now, in the middle of that, there's one other wrinkle. David signed up to fight with the Philistines against the Israelites. Now, God definitely spared him that. He didn't have to fight against his own people because he and the Philistines got in a bit of an argument and got kicked out of the camp. So he was spared that portion, yet now he's leaving the Philistine camp and he has returned home, you know, his house where his wife and his children are. And he is struck with this massive tragedy. Yeah, something like that. He's struck with this massive tra tragedy. The city has been burnt to the ground. All the women and all the children have been taken as captives. He's not sure what to do. He and all the men grieve. He seeks the face of God and God says, go and get them back. I am with you. So he takes these men and he goes and he does exactly that. Now here is the bit of scripture I wanted to share with you today. It comes out of 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 21. As I just mentioned, David has routed the enemy and he's gotten everything back that he ever expected. He got his wife and his kids back. He saved all of these people. He is no longer the heel. He is the hero again. And he comes back to the city triumphant. And it's time to split up the loot. And this is where the wrinkle comes. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 21. I'll put it here so you can follow along. It says this, when David came to the 200 men who were too exhausted to follow Dave, who'd also been left at the brook of Benzor, and they went to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. Then David approached the people and greeted them. All the wicked and worthless men among those who went with David said, because they didn't go with us, we're not going to give them any of the spoils that we've recovered, except to every man, his wife, and his kids, that they may lead them away and depart. David then says, you must not do so, my brothers, and what the Lord has given us, who has kept us, delivering us into our hands, the band that came against us, who will listen to you in this matter? For as he shared is who goes down to the battle, so shall his share be who stays with the baggage. They shall share alike. So it has been from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel to this very day. You know what I find extraordinary here is that sometimes those people that we see in our lives that are leaders in some manner, especially spiritual leaders, pastors and missionaries, those who teach Sunday school, those who greet at the door, we as believers oftentimes think that God holds them in a slightly different standard and he is going to give to them significantly more than he gives to those who are currently just seeking to live righteously and grow in their own faith. Yet David doesn't see it that way at all and he makes a statute that those who went out to fight on the front lines and those who stayed back to guard the baggage would receive the same amount of spoils. So that's my first point. I want to encourage you as I am speaking to myself. If the job God has given you is a little bit smaller, he really only wants you to do it well. He's not asking you to beg for more or to assume you're going to not be rewarded for doing the task he's given you. Just because you're not in a leadership role does not mean God doesn't want to work through your life in massive ways. And so I encourage you, whatever it is that God has given you, do the absolute best you can do with that. And in regards to that, I do have a 
bit of scripture I have to close with. As I was writing this, preparing this, and praying about it, this one kept coming back to my mind. I'll put it on the screen here as well. It's a bit shorter. It says this. Let a man regard us in this manner. As servants of Christ, stewards of the mysteries of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. That's my second point. If Paul can say, all I am is a steward of God's goodness, how much more can you say it? How much more can I say it? There's nothing extraordinary about me. It's actually that we're being called to be stewards of the mysteries of God. And in that regard, we are all the same in Christ. Well, I hope this has been of some encouragement to you. I know it has been to me. Don't forget to uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If there's a struggle in your life, I ask that you go ahead, jot that down in the comments here. I would love to pray along with you as you and I attempt to be the servants of Christ God has called us to be. Well, God bless. I'll see you next week.